Hey everybody, John Peterson here, and I wanted to put out a quick little video today talking about this concept called light shaping. You know, for us as photographers, our whole deal is about capturing light. That's what we do. We record light on our sensor, and that gets transmitted into and translated into a, an image. And how we as photographers deal with light has a profound impact on the final result of our image. And you can manipulate light, even though we're out in nature and landscape and we don't control the sun and the moon and the rotation of the earth, we can control the light that is in our camera. We can do that technically through camera settings. We can do it compositionally for how we position ourselves relative to the light and to the subject. And then lastly, we can do a lot of light manipulation and light shaping in post-processing. And that's kind of what this little video is about, is just to show you a quick example of how you can shape the light in post-processing to bring some additional values and some intrinsic qualities to an image. Light shaping can bring depth to an image, it can set a mood, it can um, do a multitude of things for your images. And so learning how to handle light both in the field and in the digital darkroom is really critical for us as photographers. So take a look at this quick video. Um, you know, let me know what you think. Leave a comment below. Subscribe to the channel for more of these videos. But thanks for watching. All right, let's go ahead and jump on into this first example. Um, this shot was taken in the Palouse of Eastern Washington, which is a lot of rolling wheat fields. And you know, as photographers, what we do is we really just capture light on our sensors. And so what I do is I look way beyond the subject and I look at light pattern, color, texture. Those are the things that I look at when when evaluating whether I want to take a photograph or not. And in this particular case, I saw these really cool rolling hills and I saw some light areas and some dark areas. And I thought I could put together a really wonderful image of this light and of these cool shapes. And so that's why I took this sort of abstract image. Um, and now I want to work on this in post processing and really shape the light that's in this image to create something that has some three dimensionality, that has some shape structure, that has some visual interest. What you're seeing right now is just the raw file. It's the basic ingredients to this image. And for me, when I'm going through my catalog, I'm evaluating the images based upon shape, pattern, texture, color, and light, not necessarily on the subject. And I saw this and I knew that this would be a fun one to work on in post-processing. And so what you're seeing here is the absolutely unedited raw file. And what I'm gonna do is go through and show you a couple of quick, easy steps to take this flat, bland image and really make it pop and jump, okay? And we're gonna do that through light shaping. So let me go ahead and get rid of this image. And I'll show you this one. So this was the next step. I did a little work on the green color. I brought the greens out with some vibrance and saturation. So let's just get that out of the way. I got some of the greens done, but now what I really want to do is focus on light shaping. Notice we have the light ridges up here and then we have the darks in between. And I want to work on highlighting those to create that three dimensionality. So I do this with dodge and burn tools. Right now I'm using Tony Kuiper's um, uh, luminosity panel um, and he's got a great dodge and burn tool in here. So I'm gonna go ahead and start dodging and burning in here and I'll do this really quick. Um, but what I wanna do is burn in some of the dark areas of this image because it's the difference between darks and lights that will um, create this sense of three dimensionality for us. So what I'm doing now is I'm just highlighting some of the darks and there's this dark patch right up here, which I like. 
there's a dark patch right over here I may want to increase let's go up to a get the brush size up there I want to make this a little bit darker I want to really darken up that foreground you know and I'll just kind of just gradually build up my edits I won't do a lot all at once but I'll just gradually build them up and work through it so you can see I've gone from this to that instantly created some depth without it with it so that's just the burn tool now I want to do a dodge tool and work on some of the highlights so let's take that back down to maybe seven percent get my brush size up there a little bit that's a little bit too much so let's go down to five percent the thing with this is I don't want to make my edits visible I want them to be very 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 subtle in all of this and even though I can see my brush strokes the finished result will look very subtle and you won't be able to see any brush strokes at all and then there was this area right in here that needed a little lightning. This area right around the darks needed a little lightning. Up here was awesome. And so I've gone from that to that. And if you look at all of my edits in total so far, flat, ooh, we're getting some more dimensionality to it. You know, I want to make some things a little bit darker to really accentuate Uh, to really accentuate some of this um, dichotomy between the light and the dark. So I'll go through and do another pass in this because I want to make this nice and dark. Make this even a little bit darker. And maybe a little bit of the foreground. I know that I'm going to put a vignette on this which will darken some of the foreground and some of the stuff around the sides. And I don't really want to darken this because that's already a strong enough line. I'm really a, around creating um, depth between these two. So now I'll evaluate what I've done. We'll go from original to some depth. Ooh, nice. Now I know that I wanted to add a, some Orton effect into this. You can do this in Lightroom, um, Capture One, Photoshop. I've got an action set up to create uh, an Orton effect and what the Orton does it sharpens and it blurs and it adds a glow into the image so without Orton and with Orton so you can see it darkened my shadows and lightened my highlights that's why I didn't go too much on my dodge and burn layers because I knew I was going to add this into it which was going to darken and lighten everything so now let's look at my whole image it's the original that's the finished example and you know what I don't really like these areas right here they're a little bit too dark so I'm gonna go through and lighten them just a little bit and reevaluate where I'm at that's looking a whole lot better now I know that there's there are dark areas in everything around here and so what I want to do is darken some of those darks and add just a smidge of contrast so again I'll use the Tony Kuiper panel and I will select a darks dark four and then I want to add some curve into this and I want to create a little bit of contrast in the darks and you can see me do this real quick and we went from that to that it's a very subtle thing and then also in the midtones I want to add a little bit of contrast so I'm going to go up and select the mids go up to my curves and again just a little bit of contrast we went from that to that it's very 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 subtle now what I know is I know I want to have a little bit more color from the natural light up on top of these ridges 
And so what I want to do is I'm going to create a quick little color balance layer and add some yellows to replicate some of the sunlight. So what I'll do is add some yellow into this. I'll invert my mask that it was created on. And then I'll take my brush and I'll gradually paint in some of this yellow. And again, I want this very, very subtle, but I want to really accentuate the feeling of sunlight on top of these ridges. I'm going to bump this up just a smidge. And I'm just starting to slowly layer in some of the yellow color into the top of this ridge. And I'll turn it on and off. Um, it's very, very subtle. You might not see it through the video, but it just gives this feeling of a little bit of warmth and a little bit of natural sunlight into this image. So in five minutes, really quick edit on this to go from a flat, bland image to something that has three dimensionality, a dynamic quality to it, some vibrance and having some dark darks in there and some light lights really pleases the human brain. We like seeing really dark and really light. We like to see dynamic range in our brains. And so accentuating that knowledge and knowing that if I would shape the light in such a way, I can create a more pleasing image. So one more time, that was the original file flat, good structure, and then this, vibrant, deep, has some depth to it. So there you go. Thanks for, thanks for watching this, and thanks for thinking about shaping the light in your image.